All right, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our weekly webinar. We are happy to have you all here. Looking forward to a great presentation from our speaker. Uh, before we introduce her, I'll remind everyone to keep yourselves on mute, please, and thank you. And we are recording, so um, keep that in mind if you like to go back and watch this again, or if you know somebody who you think would find this interesting, uh, the link will be available starting tomorrow. Um, if you need closed captioning at the bottom of your screen, you should see the show captions captions uh, button and you can click on that. And we did a little test run of our speaker's presentation and that is also already automatically captioned. Um, so you'll be in good hands with that. Um, a few other housekeeping announcements. Um, I think most of you are probably here because you receive our weekly My Alliance newsletter and I wanted to draw your attention to an event. We have coming up on Friday, June 9th, and that is the Dementia Training Room. Uh, and if you are in the Kansas City or specifically Grandview area uh, on June 9th and you are a caregiver, whether a family caregiver or a professional caregiver of someone with Alzheimer's or another dementia, we strongly encourage you to come out to this event. Um, there's no charge to attend. Um, we will have experts on different Alzheimer's topics, including uh, bathing behaviors, uh, depression and anxiety, when the dementia is not Alzheimer's, but one of the other kinds of dementia we're aware of, and other topics that we know are quite meaningful to people uh, who are caring for someone with a dementia. So um, the information about how to sign up for that is in this week's My Alliance newsletter, and it will be in there again next week. Um, I encourage you to take a look, and if you have questions, please uh, feel free to reach out to me. You can send email to My Alliance at KUMC.edu, and we'll be happy to share that information. Uh, so with that being said, let's go to what we're all here for today, and I'm very happy to introduce Jessica Stokes as our speaker for the program today, and Jessica is uh, an entrepreneur at heart. She believes strongly in supporting all people on their journeys, wherever they are, uh, always seeking her own growth and truth. Jessica teaches and performs belly dance uh, and practices therapeutic touch and Reiki. Jessica is a daughter, a mom, a wife, a friend, and a caregiver. She has navigated multiple family members with Alzheimer's disease, other dementias, including Parkinson's disease. She is an avid, avid labyrinth walker and trained labyrinth facilitator. And her book, Seeking Clarity in the Labyrinth, A Daughter's Journey Through Alzheimer's, is um, how I found out about her. Uh, so, um, one more thing, Jessica provides labyrinth workshops for anyone who experiences a loss. And on top of all of that other great stuff, Jessica owns a successful cleaning business in the Denver metro area. So she's one of those people that just can do so many things. And we're very excited to have her. Uh, Jessica, thank you for zooming in with us from uh, the mountain time zone today. I'm so glad that never got confusing. We're all here, ready to hear from you. Um, so I'm going to uh, stop talking and you should be able to share your screen and take it away, Jessica. Ah, one thing more, and anyone, if you have questions during Jessica's uh, talk, feel free to use the chat and we'll have time afterward to um, answer questions and have comments. All right, Jessica and Kitty, all yours, thank you. So first, I would like to introduce you to my cat um, who thinks that she, can you all see my screen? I just, let's make sure that that's happening. Oh, no, it's well, not. Well, we can see I just you, share. but not your screen. There we go. So um, my cat likes to sit with me when I Zoom. So I keep throwing her off and she keeps jumping back on. So she will behave and settle down in a second. So, um, so I am uh, so it's such a great pleasure to get to share a little bit about labyrinths and our story with you all today. And we'll just jump right in. And a uh, let me just make sure we've got the right. Um, okay, there we go. The right spot to get it going. So, um, so why labyrinths? So as Lots of you know, and this is um, just a little dive into some inform information. And when we have dementia, we are so lost and confused. And my personal story, and that's my mom and dad on the screen, and my we were diagnosed with dementia. My mom was diagnosed with Alzheimer's in 2009, and we had a about a 14 year journey from her diagnosis to her passing. It was early onset. She was diagnosed at 64. Um, 
And in our journey, um, a lot of the things came up for us as caregivers, as well as my mom. And we, at the same time, had this interesting um, relationship to, to labyrinths and that we, my mom and my aunt had both um, had been exposed to labyrinths and started, decided to build a labyrinth. So um, it, it became this interesting, uh, perfect metaphor of our journey. And when, as we continued our journey, and as I was spending lots and lots of time with my mom and my dad, um, we have a labyrinth in their backyard or, or at the time there, my dad's now. And I was walking it a lot, both with them and alone. And as I started diving in and decided to tell our story, it was the perfect metaphor for what happens. Um, so a labyrinth is not a maze. It's a one path in, one path out. And I'm not sure if you can see my cursor. Hopefully you can. So it, th this is a perfect illustration of it. This is the path, the, the main thing on the screen takes you in. You see the center, the bench is our center of our labyrinth and the path takes you off in a direction. Clearly it goes back and forth and you wrap yourself around and eventually you walk directly into the center. So this is different than a maze. A lot of times folks think of, um, and in fact, when you look at a labyrinth, it may feel or look like you're in a maze but there is truly one path in, one path out. Sometimes it is that exact same path. You turn around at the center and you walk yourself back out. Other times there is one way in and a separate path that will take you out. But again, we're not gonna get lost like in a maze. Let's go back over 4,000 years. We see them in cave paintings um, and represented in many different cultures, again, all around the world. This picture, this uh, slide shows a lot of different early examples of labyrinths that again, go back. We see them in petroglyphs. We see them in Ireland. We see them in um, Scandinavia, France. Some of these pictures are ones that are more modern, AKA 1495 or 1200s, which is the Chart Cathedral. Um, so we, So it's been a design that's been modified and used uh, for many, many years. Not sure exactly what they were originally used for. Uh, it certainly tells a journey. So and anyone familiar with the man in the maze, which is a Native American design, um, which is specifically a life journey and it's very calls that out. So we don't know. It could have been used also for dance, for celebration, for ceremony, for contemplation, but, but there's some common designs and common paths that we see over the years. The one that has become the most replicated and the most replicated in um, that's really sort of been reignited in the um, labyrinth community started in the late 90s. And that was at the Grace Cathedral in San Francisco. And there's a picture on the slide of that. And the um, the person who reignited it was wrote a book. Um, it's um, and was really sort of reignited this idea that this labyrinth could be used in more modern than it's ever been. And it's really taken off. And these are just I'm going to flip through flip through these quickly. But these are different labyrinths, mostly in Arizona and Colorado. I'm based in Colorado, so. That's where a lot of my labyrinth pictures have come from. Um, and some are pe ones people have sent to me as well. Uh, so as you can see, there's lots of different ways that they can be made, different materials they can be made out of, uh, little different structures, different things in the center. This one on the left has nothing in the center. It's just, and it's made out of brick. The one on the right has little um, benches and little ways in which people can connect once they're inside the space together. Uh, this one is made out of grass, which is pretty cool. It's actually built in, so you can actually run a lawnmower over it. And then that one on the right is the um, My Parents Labyrinth, um, kind of tucked in with snow. It's a pretty rustic labyrinth. Uh, it has the natural surroundings in it as well. Uh, here's another illustration of a 
Man in the Maze painted. And actually the other one's a Man in the Maze too, made with rock and gravel. Some more different just styles and different ways in which labyrinths can be presented and created. Um, these are pictures people have sent to me. The one on the left is actually in Michigan or uh, Maine. And uh, I love the use of the different types of material, but baked into the ground. So you've got the stone as well as river rock. And then the other one is a Maui, and it's a really large one. It's on top of a uh, mesa and is really quite a extensively um, traveled to one and beautifully built again using grass or moss and um, uh, natural sand. One of the things that I absolutely love in my journeys of visiting labyrinths is how people present them and how they're um, they're presented, how, how they're um, connecting to people that visit them. And uh, one of the things that's so interesting to me is that it's very much, there's some basic things that people do think of them as being a use of connecting with prayer or meditation or finding some um, connection to a higher power, but also it's just a place to enjoy and a place to take a nice walk too. So I find how they're, I love this slide because they're all like the little pictures are so interesting. Um, so how a labyrinth connects to us as we look at a journey such as Alzheimer's or dementia or ultimately any kind of loss. And the interesting thing in the way that the path works, and these a few of these pictures are just from one day walking with my parents, that there's this sense that sometimes you're following, sometimes you're leading. The path flips around itself. And when my journey with my parents and um, there was those times in which I was, I was the daughter, I was the um, helper, I was the one that was helping them clean out their house and reorganize the kitchen so it was usable for them in different ways. And then there's times in which I was the, the, the helper. And then as we navigated the journey, I became the one that was helping direct my dad and making those very difficult, hard decisions we had to make as far as we wanted to keep her at home, but ultimately did have to put her into a facility. My dad was not able, his physical health got in the way in which we needed to um, make sure we were taking care of him as well as mom. And so all those things happened that then I became the one that was really leading. And like the path in the labyrinth, when I flip around and I'm not following, or I'm the, the depending where I'm at, not am I the follower, but then I become the leader. Um, this picture was one of the last times we all got, um, not quite, she went into a facility in September, but it was a special memory and moment. They were, um, it was their anniversary that we celebrated a few years early, these some anniversary pictures in which that breakthrough happened that mom was connecting. So that time in which she, it was one of those moments that she knew she could see us and she could connect with us. And not that I think it's because we were walking the labyrinth, but I think the labyrinth creates a activity and a way we can connect and enjoy our person. And one of the things that I advocate dramatically is that we have to continue with our loved ones to see them exactly where they are, love them for who they are at the moment and at the time. It's so easy to imagine or we're letting go of different, different levels of our journey, but we have to continue to see them as human beings too. So labyrinths, how the heck do you find all those darn labyrinths, right? So this is a tool that is awesome. Um, it's and um, for we can put them in the links and such for the um, for anyone that wants them um, at the end. Uh, but this is an awesome tool that you can actually put in your state. You can put in the city, and you will get a list of labyrinths that are registered on the labyrinth locator. Um, it is worldwide and it's pretty awesome. So this is a great way if you want to go find a labyrinth, 
in your area. Uh, there's other ways, and one of the interesting, cool things that happened with, um, with the pandemic is this whole influx of utilizing finger labyrinths or ones in which you can walk on, you know, in your hand. Um, the other wonderful thing about this is that if folks do have trouble actually walking, we certainly had that with mom uh, at a certain point. Mom couldn't or didn't want to walk anymore. However, we continued to take her out to the labyrinth to the very end. But then there's these other cool tools that this one on the top corner, it has a little stylus and you can trace. It's wooden, so there's a little groove in there. There's this other one that's with sand. There's some cards that sort of traveling cards that show the different styles and types of labyrinths. And this is another um, plastic version. These can all be found at Veriditas, which is the labyrinth, sort of one of the, you can also look at Amazon and Amazon has lots of these as tools as well. Um, there's printed PDFs. I can certainly get that to you all if anyone needs or wants that. You can also Google labyrinths and you can usually find them too. The fun thing about paper copies is you can color, you can write, you can scribble on them. You can really use them however you need or want to. Um, and it's a great tool navigating and working with folks. So as we, many of us know that, you know, as we go through the different stages of dementia, coloring can be a really nice thing. And this is a fun, not to anyone that likes to trace things, there's one path in, one path out. So it's, you're not gonna get frustrated that you're getting stuck. Um, there's also this super cool tool. It's an app you can download either on the Apple Store or Google Playlist. Uh, and it is actually, you can put it on a um, tablet or your phone. It's hard on your phone. It's pretty tiny, but you can actually trace with your finger the path. And then it like plays music and it gives you a little sparkle little at the end. And it's a, it can also be a wonderful tool to use either for yourself in your own journey or with someone who is navigating their own. Um, it's beautiful music too. So it's a wonderful way to connect folks with music too. A few quick things on how to walk a labyrinth. Really, there's no right or wrong way. Uh, again, when we were walking, the, w walking it with my mom, there was times we would just have a good conversation while we were walking and we'd be talking about whatever. Um, I, one of my favorite things about all labyrinths, but particularly the one that we built was that all of the children, my kids who are young and now my brother's children, uh, love it, love to walk the path, but they also like to just run around like it's a playground. So, uh, it can certainly be for play as well as set intentions or meditation. However, there are some ways in which we can connect to it and, and use it as a tool for ourselves as we are supporting our own journey or need to relax or need to have a place to set some intentions. So just a few, these are sort of a quick and easy things to consider. Um, letting go of expectations, breathing, setting an intention letting yourself be really connected to the space you're in. Uh, there's some ways in which you can relate specifically to your walk while walking in, thinking about releasing and letting go in the center, receiving and listening. And then while walking out, reflecting or finding resolve or reclaiming. There is no right or wrong way. You can walk in and skip the walk out if you need to. Uh, sometimes it's annoying and you get lost or, you know, you like you get lost in thoughts. And again, there it can be done truly any way you want. There's uh, I throw the slide in because it shows how very simple you can create your own. It does not have to be totally intense and crazy. These are just some very simple drawings of circles and spirals that also can be very enjoyable if you're working with someone with Alzheimer's 
to just draw a circle and let them follow it. This becomes much more easier than those more complicated ones that this next picture shows it that have a lot of paths back and forth that could be confusing. Um, so again, these are just those different ways in which you can connect um, with, with the labyrinth in different ways. Um, and then here is another, this last picture, gives us a sense of one, how the grass can grow in this, in our particular labyrinth, and then also the view. So oftentimes the different labyrinths have different settings and different ways in which we um, can relate to our surroundings as well. So that's my like speedy fast um, presentation. Um, again, a couple things, and then I'd love to open it up to questions and figure out where my questions are on my different computer screens. Um, the, just a couple takeaways. There's no right or way, wrong way to walk a labyrinth. The intention is that all of it is a tool, so a tool on our journey. So if we are navigating Alzheimer's ourselves um, or dementia, um, it, the, just like listening to music, just like doing a crossword puzzle, just like taking walks, which we all know helps being active, all those things that help us continue our stimulation, a labyrinth is an interesting way to find another tool to engage ourselves if we are navigating our own dementia. As a caregiver, we all, those of us that are caregivers know, those of us that are supporting caregivers know, it's super difficult. It's hard, it's painful, it feels like you're gonna, you know, you'll never see an end. It often feels like you're really alone. Uh, and it's important to find some ways in which we can um, support ourselves. And this is a simple, easy way either to find one in your, wherever you are, or to use some of the online tools or the um, finger labyrinths to just have a space in which to connect. And I'm gonna um, show, because I have some examples of what these labyrinths look like. So I don't know, can you guys see me still? You guys can see me, yeah. So I'm gonna show the some of the handheld lab tools. So these are some of those cards. So, or I guess I need to take it off. Um, you probably can't see my face, huh? So I'm gonna stop sharing now, right? Kelly, I'm gonna do that. So you guys can see my pictures. So these are some of the cards that, and the cool thing about these is that they have different patterns. The other very cool of this deck actually has the information on the back of where these labyrinths are. So these are labyrinths that exist in the world and it gives a little um, information too. This is a picture just of that spiral um, that you can either use and you can trace or you can, again, it, it shows some of those patterns in and out. Uh, this is a three-way, a try, I, that's a specific name. Um, but it uh, it does, it is physically one path in, one path out. It looks like it's not, but it is. Um, so, and then this is a really tiny, I don't know if the camera's gonna see, little itty bitty one that actually I'm gonna put my hand behind it. So it's like almost handheld that comes with a stylus. So, and then you can trace it with your stylus. Uh, this is another example, and there's a picture of this, a nice one, wooden one, also has a groove, so you can trace, and it also comes with a stylus, so you can trace the patterns. And then this one, this last one I'm going to show you, is, um, is actually a hard plastic. It's really wonderful to use with folks either um kids it's also great to use with but also folks that have um I'll show the that's a better view um with dementia or Alzheimer's because it doesn't matter you can spill on this it's really easy to clean so if a uh, soda or a drink or whatever spills on it it can be easily washed 
Um, and it's, again, that calming sense and feeling, putting your finger in it and tracing the grooves can be quite relaxing. So there's some interesting tools, again, to utilize with anyone that is navigating dementia or, again, that relaxing for yourself. So at this time, we have about five minutes left. So I'm happy to um, open it up for questions. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Jessica. Um, I don't know that I ever knew until I found out about your work that labyrinths were something that you could enjoy, you know, with your finger or on a piece of paper, or of course, there's an app for that, for everything. Um, and so I think that caregivers really appreciate innovative ways to bring some calm and some peace to not only their loved ones, but, but to themselves. Um, you mentioned, you know, you can't really do this wrong. And I think a lot of us are set up to think, can't do that. What if I do it wrong? Um, and this feels like a nice way to try something that, you know, the world won't come to an end or anything if you go one way instead of the other. Um, so thank you for that. Um, does anybody have any questions or thoughts to share with Jessica? You can unmute yourselves if you like, and or you're welcome to use the chat um, to do that. We've got, uh, Jessica, your timing is excellent. Sometimes we have to get the hook out for our speakers. <laughs> um, and it's always hard to tear myself away from our talks. I'm so glad that uh, you were able to join us today. Um, so I wanna put that out for anybody else that might still be with us. You're all probably making circles on your papers. Maybe you're all meditating deeply. You know, say, Kelly, quit talking, let me meditate, fine. Um, <laughs> So there is certainly a way in which that you can, I could play music and we can actually do it all together. So there is a way that sometimes I do that too, but I knew we were short on time. So, um, and the information about all time or about labyrinths is there's, you know, there's lots and lots more that we can dive into specifically about labyrinths too. So um, I wanted to give an overview and kind of a sense of just a little bit of what's out there that, um, and some examples, because it's it's really interesting to see some of the different ways and how people have interpreted them too. There you go. All right, well, we've got a few more minutes, so we'll stay here. I am going to put up uh, what we usually have as our closing slide, Jessica, so you can just hang out. Um, but I'm gonna put our, our exit slide up on the screen that's got, we haven't had a lot of time to do this lately. So this is maybe actually a really great idea. Um, I'm going to put our closing screen up and y'all should be able to see that momentarily. Um, I know a lot of you have come to us because you are interested in um, My Alliance and you received the My Alliance email on Mondays. And some of you may be interested in the latest greatest research projects that we have going on. Uh, so you should be able to see on the screen now that if you're interested in participating in one of our many studies, you can visit our website, and it's there on the screen, kumc.edu slash kuadrc. You can send an email, you can call on the phone and press one to talk to one of the wonderful research recruitment folks about what's going on. Um, shameless plug, we always want you to spread the word about My Alliance. Um, so feel free to encourage those you know who would benefit from this to join my alliance. Go to joinmyalliance.com. It's pretty easy. Uh, send an email to myalliance at kumc.edu, um, and then folks can sign up to get our emails once so, or twice a week. Mondays at seven in the morning when we have our newsletter come out, and Thursdays at ten to remind you of our topic for the webinar for the week, um, and then. Uh, I will add that if anybody feels moved to give a gift to KU um, on the screen there, you can see some information about how to do that. Uh, so again, thank you, Jessica. I see a couple of things in the chat, so I don't want to let those get away. Elaine says, thanks. Thank you, Elaine. Elaine Dale is somebody who is often at our webinars, not to call you out, but it always makes me smile to see Elaine's name. Um, and uh, S. Bibler, that's Sarah. Sarah um, is one of our wonderful interns was in touch with Jessica um, as we were setting this up. So she says, thank you also. Um, and I will add to that. Thank you from me and all of us on the call today. Um, next week, everybody, we will have um, two of my colleagues, Alicia McMillan and Amy Wilson, talking about how to advocate for yourself when you 
uh, are concerned about memory loss in either yourself or in a loved one. And they're gonna give some good tips on uh, things you should say and uh, where you can go and who to talk to. So that information will be in the newsletter on Monday morning. And um, we'll be here next Thursday, two o'clock central time. Uh, Cheryl says, this is really interesting and I hope to learn more soon. Thanks for great information. So yes, ditto and with And I Cheryl. just, and sorry to uh, uh, Kelly, just plug in too. I did just put my, I spelled it wrong. So, cause I was going too fast. I'm putting my, um, my website in the chat. If anyone wants more information, all the links that I talked about are on my website. There's an information page. It's Jessica, www.jessicastokesauthor.com. And it has um, lots of, it also has different, I have a couple others. Um, there's a link to some other um, uh, podcasts and different things I've been on if you want to hear more about labyrinths. Um, and again, there's the link for the, the labyrinth locator, that the app and um, some different information. So excellent. Okay, so yeah, it should be uh, to everyone in the chat now, jessicastokesauthor.com. This presentation will be available to watch uh, tomorrow. So if you wanna go back and see it again or share it with someone else, you can do that. Uh, and Valerie adds another thank you. So thank you, Jessica. And I appreciate it. It was wonderful to connect. This. Absolutely, enjoy uh, Colorado. Do not send us any bad weather, please. And thank you. And um, We'll see you all back next week. Everyone have a wonderful, wonderful week. Take care. Bye-bye.